What is up, everyone? My name is Jonathan. I'm the host here at the Venue RX Podcast. Thank you for joining us for today's interview. Now, today we are interviewing live artist John Garcia. This man is a true artist in every sense of the word and we're going to unpack his story how he got to be where he is right now and just the incredible work that he does as well as tips for wedding pros now before we get started with that i did want to remind you to make sure you're subscribed to our channel and hit that alert bell because that will allow you to get notifications every single time we launch amazing interviews on this channel we are so excited that you're joining us for this journey as we continue to provide value and bring value to the wedding and events community. And so we're excited you're here with us. Thanks so much for joining us and let's get to the show. Uno, dos, tres. John, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Well, I can't wait to get into your story. Um, you have a piece of this industry that I think is very unique, very exciting. Why don't you tell everyone what you do? What is your you, your piece in the, the whole wedding and event industry? Awesome. Great. Thanks, man. Uh, so my name is John Garcia. I'm a live wedding painter. So I go to events and weddings and I capture those intimate moments on canvas. And so one of my favorite quotes is your wedding is worth painting. So the moment when you guys are your first kiss, your first dance, as you're at the altar in your vows, I try to take all of those emotions, the colors, the scenery, and I put it on canvas. And so that's, that's the space that I occupy in the wedding industry. Wow. So that is insane to me. I mean, being, being someone I'm, I'm fairly creative on the scale of like one to a hundred, maybe I'm like a 20, right. But I think that's like a 500 on a scale. How, so how did you get into this? Oh man, this is such a really cool story. So, um, 2012, uh, a friend of mine was getting married and, uh, I was invited to the wedding and I was, I'm not even going to lie, man. It's going to, I was going to, I was being cheap, right. I'm like, I'm not gonna spend $100 on Zola or whatever to get you a gift certificate. I wanna give you, I asked him, I said, can I gift you something? And he's like, that's perfect. And I said, can I, it's gonna be around the arts. And he's like, dude, that's even better. And I said, beautiful. So day of the wedding, I show up an hour before and um, I do my, my spiel, right? This is the first time I've ever done anything, which is a little nerve wracking, but I felt confident in it. The wedding started at four o'clock. I got there by three. I set everything up. I start painting the background. Wedding started at four. Then four, you know, but the wedding was over by 445. They were at the altar for 15 minutes. So I just continue to paint, but I'm panicking because they're already gone. I didn't have a photographer. I didn't have a team. This was just a gift. So my, my internal artist heart, man, was just freaking out going, Oh my gosh, I've lost that moment. Where are they? Where'd they go? They're doing this. I'm now stuck in a forest <laughs> painting the air. And it was just, I, it was a huge fail for me, man. Um, and as an artist, I was like, oh, this is terrible. So I put another hour and 20 minutes into it. And I'm like, hey, this is as good as it's going to get because I still want to enjoy the wedding. And so from there, I was able to, okay. I, I put my best foot forward. I did everything that I could. I did everything right. And then I was like, okay, it's time for presentation. Uh, I grabbed the photographer and I wanted to keep this very intimate, just like us four, because I didn't want anybody else to see this work. <laughs> and so then from there, I give them a 30 second spiel, of my heart. Hey, I try to capture that moment. I try to use the sun, the balance, the value and the memory to put it on canvas. And they're like, oh my gosh, I mean, I built this up. <laughs> and so the moment happened, right? So then from there, I show them the painting and in my heart, I'm panicking. I'm like, oh, the moment of truth, they're gonna hate it. This is gonna be the worst thing in the world. I'm ashamed of it. I didn't even want it. I didn't even wanna give it to them. I felt gross about it. And then the moment happened and I look at them and they are both just, they start getting really emotional and right about to cry. And I'm looking at myself going, this? no way this is this is garbage and they loved it they freaked out the they said this is the most intimate gift that we have ever received john thank you so much and then from there my heart started freaking out going oh my gosh this is horrible i gotta fix it and they said don't touch it i love exactly how it is 
and I was so moved by it that that sparked the beginning of this industry for me. And it was so powerful because then I texted the, the bride and the groom and I said, hey, thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your day. From there, then I asked them for a review. And after that, sorry, my dog is, my puppy's here. Um, we love puppies. We're all about the, pu we actually have had a dog on the show before. David oh, Holtz, like fifth or sixth episode or something. Yeah, so. Oh, she's a cutie. And so I asked them for a review and they, they wrote me this review and it was gorgeous. So I texted the bride and I said, hey, thank you so much for writing that. And she's like, I have no idea, John. And I'm like, wait, did that come from him? Oh, no way. It made me emotional. And what it basically said, and I'm going to paraphrase it, but then I'm going to get to like the really juicy, the punchline that I use as a marketing technique. Basically said, John is so talented. He was able to grab my, the emotions, everything there on this canvas. And then this is the, the, the quote unquote, the punchline for me, my marketing line. He wrote, I will never have, I would, I will never have my coffee book table out on my wedding album out on the coffee table. However, John's painting above my fireplace will never come down. Everybody that comes in, one, we get complimented and two, they just love the entire emotion behind it. And that was one of the greatest gifts that they, uh, reviews that they could have given me, which is so humbling because here I thought, hey, this is a really, dude, this is a horrible painting. I'm embarrassed by it. They loved it. And so from there, I started to, I'm going to give myself more time in the beginning. I'm going to, you know, you, you kind of start calibrating this business model and see what that looks like. And it was incredible, man. That's, and that was the birth of the live wedding painter for me at the time. I didn't create this, right? Uh -huh. But I love that I get to be a part of this season and this journey and help others along the way as well. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Why? So why art? I mean, how did you, because you don't, I couldn't do that to save my life for sure. I mean, they wouldn't even have been able to tell that it was two people getting married in a forest or tree. I wasn't, right. I wouldn't be painting air or anything. I mean, how did you get into art and painting in the beginning? Oh, wow. Okay. That's a great question. So um, I always, so English was my second language, right? And so for me, I loved sketching and doodling. So that was for me the, that's something that I did. And so I, since I was a little kid, I was just kind of do these things. I went through a really hot season where I did graffiti because it was a fun cool. outlet and it was really cool. And I did some really cool stuff um, through that art, but I loved it that I get to, what I loved about it was the process mm -hmm. and the emotion uh, behind the artistry of painting. It wasn't the product, it wasn't the outcome, it was the 20 minutes leading up to it, the in the moment, mixing, painting, responding, reflecting. It was very therapeutic for me. And from there, I just started to love that more kind of as a escape and I loved doing it. And it was weird because I was always doodling something, right? Mm -hmm. There was a season I grew up in the 90s, so I did a lot of low riders and I did a lot of clowns and all of that. And that was hot when it was there. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Orange County. So I was born in Venezuela, which is in, I was born in Caracas, which is the capital. Okay. And then I moved to the States when I was four, four or five. And um, from there, you know, learning English as a second language, being the only brown kid in the 90s. Um, I went to a school called George White Elementary. <laughs> Oh, it was awesome. And so, I mean, I just, I had to uh, find some sort of outlet to just be myself because everybody else was doing like cello and, you know, doing all these music things. And sure, I, I, it was fun for me, but it wasn't like, I can't wait to get to a guitar or a piano or a cello or a violin. I'm like, hey, give me a pen, a piece of paper and pen. And man, you won't see me for her hours <laughs> so that was kind of like a natural expression of your like the artist yeah. inside you came out where maybe you saw music around you but for you that expression flowed out through you know your hand so was it so was it a pen was it where did it start it was it like a sharpie that it started with was it paint because you know it was it was i started off with uh 
was it Crayola? It was uh, color pencils. Okay. Because it was easy, it was cheap, and it was fun, and it was quick, right? It was fun that I could, and it was fast that I could draw something, and then if I didn't like it, I could use a different color to cover it, mm -hmm. and I get to layer it. So it started from color pencils, then I moved to pencils, then I moved to charcoal, then I went to um, fine markers, then I went to Sharpie. So it was kind of a progression along the way, and then I finally got the courage to pick up a paintbrush, and I was terrified because you can't control it. It's it's so abstract. Even if you're trying to do a straight line with a brush, that muscle memory wasn't there. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's just developing. And the, I, I teach this all the time. Passion drives perfection. If you're passionate about something, it's going to motivate you to be the best at whatever that is. So that's something that I just, I give out and I try to emulate that because I'm passionate about that or the wedding or art or creating, I'm gonna to strive to become better and be the best painter or artist that I can be because I'm passionate about it. If I'm bored, I'm doing it. Whether I get paid a, a zero dollars or a million, mm -hmm. I'm gonna paint. I love that. So how do you capture an image when it's dynamic? Because that for me has been the, the, the big, explosion in my head about like how how does someone go about painting a scene that's happening that's moving you know it's one thing to just take a photo and it right. captures that still image <clears throat> but you're creating a still image over a period of time where other things are happening like you said at that first one the bride and the groom had walked away they were doing other things they were going so do you <laughs> capture that in your mind like how are you or or is this kind of a flowing picture describe to me a little bit of the process Oh man, that was, that's such a beautiful question. So my process in learning how to execute this at a wedding, I show up now four hours before the, the wedding. So if the wedding's at four, at one o'clock, I'm painting the background. I give myself plenty of time. I paint the entire thing. So by the time the bride and the groom finally show up, the painting's at least 70% done because when they are up there at the altar, I have no more than 15 minutes to capture them. Mm. And unless I'm a printer, it's impossible. So what I've done is um, with color theory and the human anatomy, I know that everybody has two arms, everybody has two legs, everybody has a face, right? I can actually put the body in there and then I can really outline what they are. Also, my process has evolved. So now I have a team. So now I have a photographer that captures that moment and then she downloads uh, through Wi-Fi and I put it on an iPad as a reference, as a backup. So mm -hmm. it's so beautiful because that, man, the, 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 um, the dopamine that I get when creating something from nothing and just being present and alive in that moment, man, it's just beautiful, right? It's something where it's like people say, oh, he had a, a knack or a natural. He was born like that. You get me in front of a canvas and you give me some paint. If I don't have an alarm, I will lose track of time. And that's wow. part of it. I love that process because it's like, hey, at one point, so I even have a GoPro uh, time-lapsing the whole thing because people don't believe me that I that I did this in one day. And that's part of my presentation. That's, that's a little, so cool. uh, that's a secret sauce. And um, they look at the iPad and they just see my hand like a printer just going nuts and it's so cool and it's that emotion that 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 powerful just moment i mean i love setting the table yeah and i love when people get to experience that so that's really cool yeah i was gonna say so you're you're creating this i love that by the way the gopro thing because i would be fascinated like if it was me i would watch the gopro footage of you doing that probably just yeah. on repeat for hours that would be mesmerizing to me um yeah. but it sounds like this process is really a deeply emotional, emotionally driven, I guess, event. Like you pour your heart and soul into this. Do you find it's tough sometimes to separate? Maybe, um, is this something you do full-time? This is yes. what you do full-time? Okay, so, and that's huge. Um, but, and I wanna ask you a little bit about that here in a second, but do you find that maybe what's going on in your personal life or maybe even like the pressures that you feel now running a business ever impact the way that you paint just because of the 
total heart and emotion that you put into the painting? Yeah, so I would take that pressure um, and use it to be motivated because in that moment, right? Like I, have, I still have to produce, mm -hmm. I still have to deliver this piece. And through that process, uh, most of my couples, I've have such a really strong connection with that. To be honest, they would be ecstatic if I drew them, if I painted them as stick figures because of the relationship element of it, because they know me, they know my family, they know my kids, they know the process. So we're, this is a really, because it, like you said, a very intimate process, I really make sure that I give it my all. So I use that pressure um, to really just tone it out. For me, it's, there, it's therapeutic. So if I'm having a bad day and I'm just like, man, I need a quick pick me up or I can put on the office on the background, <laughs> okay. I can, you know, go for a run. But if I really just kind of like want to shift um, my day, I go down to my studio and I paint or I grab a, a sketch pad and I just go for it. And then I'm like, oh man, okay, I feel, I feel good. It, it recalibrates and it, something happens in my brain that when I get to create, it's just beautiful. And it, it's kind of like a clean slate. So all of the worries, the, the hangups, the frustrations, the pressure, when I'm in front of the canvas, it just goes away. It's just me and the canvas. It's just, it's me and like a beautiful song or a beautiful dance that I get to just continue to like, okay, great. I'm going to look at my reference. Okay. Awesome. I'm going to go here. Okay. I'm going to grab that value. I'm going to grab that shade. I'm going to grab that. Oh, that's a beautiful reflection. And I just get to like, just kind of pour into it. So man, it's powerful. I love doing it. And to be honest, it's become an entertainment piece at weddings because people see that passion and they just surround me going, Oh my gosh, is this really happening right now in front of our eyes? Yeah, it's really, it's really cool, man. And so it now has become an entertainment piece. I don't sell it as an entertainment piece, but that's just a byproduct of the passion that I just, man, I, I love doing it. It's just weird. It's, you know, once you find something that you love, you'll never work a day in your life, right? Well, and, and you mentioned that, you know, you said, um, you had a great, great little quote there. You said, passion creates perfection. Mm. And I can definitely hear just how you're talking about your journey. At first, you were just kind of picking up a color, colored pencil because it was fun and it was easy and it was right there. You can make a quick sketch. And now you're talking about values and shades. And there's clearly a different level of intentionality that you're putting towards creating this masterpiece for this individual person. I'm wondering to help you understand who the couple is, are there some questions that you ask them or is there a specific way that you start that relationship so that you can capture them in the most authentic way possible? Yeah, so part of my booking process and part of my painting process, um, <clears throat> when a couple comes to me, uh, there are, there's a very simple questionnaire. And in that questionnaire, it's um, when are you getting married and where are you getting married? And then I put an option on, hey, who's your event coordinator? Because from there, then all I do with that is check availability. And then from there, I start building a relationship. So I drop in monthly values leading up to their wedding. Um, I send them a welcome to the John Garcia event painting uh, family. I give them a date night kit, which is really beautiful and it's really intentional. So now they receive this and they're like, oh my gosh, nobody's ever you know, I'm hiring you to do something, but you're giving me a gift in return. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm very intentional about that. Then from there, we just begin a relationship on social media. I see their personalities. I kind of, I become part of their lives. Mm -hmm. And it's really powerful because, oh, hey, it's your birthday. You're a huge Laker fan. I'm a Laker nerd. I, that's amazing. So I, I basically, it's kind of like, I'm already creating a avatar and an emotion for them for that. When I get to go to their wedding, I could just let it out. And so from that process, then I continue just to like, hey, you know, I see them on social media. Oh my gosh, hey, they love Starbucks. Oh, they love Nick's um, restaurant. They love this and that. So I kind of start making mental notes mm -hmm. and then I continue to do that. And then the month of is the most important part because I connect with them. I say, okay, great. Here's the, here's the, the million dollar question. What do you want me to paint? What moment do you want me to capture and I give them three options, but it doesn't have to be those options. It's, do you want me to capture your first kiss? Do you want me to capture your first dance? Do you want me to capture that moment where you first become one? 
That's a very powerful moment. I love painting that moment. Do you want me to capture you walking down the hallway or the, the altar celebrating? Do you want me to capture, what do you want me to capture? And that's not, a, that's a full loaded question. So that's not an easy one, but when they respond or when they answer that, um, that's where I really kind of get excited and going, okay, then I do my homework, I scout, I connect with the event coordinator. I look at the composition that I'm actually gonna be at. I look at the location. I look at the time. Um, I just really set myself up to, this is a well oil machine. If I know I lose sunlight at six o'clock before um, daylight savings, then I bring in my lights. If I have enough light, then I don't need one. I bring a backup battery for my light, for my camera. I mean, it's just a really beautiful, just flowing thing that I've, I had to learn over and over again. But I was, knowing, knowing them, I mean, just makes it that much more personal, right? Like if I'm painting for my wife or my kids or myself, man, I'm going to put everything that I have. So if somebody hires me tomorrow and says, hey, we need you to do this tomorrow, I'm still going to do my very best to going, okay, great. That's amazing location time. We have to expedite that. What moment? And then if I don't have that time to really get to know them, then I really lean on the aesthetics. And then I really lean on the nature. I lean on the location to really embody what that is in that moment. So there's different ways to do it. Mm -hmm. So real quick for any of the local Southern California folks here, you're talking about Nick's in Orange County, right? Yes. Okay. Nick's or South of Nick's? Ooh, South of Nick's. <laughs> All right. Let's go with the Southwest of flair there a little bit. Yes. Yep. yes. <laughs> Very cool. I love, so we're, we're neighbors. I'm in North County, San Diego. So we're, we're pretty cool. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So nice. I, you know what? I feel like I've actually run into you at an event before. Uh, okay. Cause we work quite a bit in Orange County, but yeah, yeah. I, I know for sure I'll, I'll end up seeing you now at some point out there. That'd but be awesome. I want to ask you a tough question. Yes. Maybe not so tough. Okay. But, I'm going to get some water because it's tough. Oh. <laughs> so <clears throat> have you ever had anyone not like your painting? Oh, Ooh. um, no, but I had somebody critique it. Uh, it's the same thing, but yeah, they were yeah, being yeah. very nice and saying, this is garbage. Um, not in that fashion, but they were saying, they were saying it without saying it. Okay. They still loved it. They just, it was a bride. And so, um, yes, to your point. <laughs> so, so, cause I, and I'm curious about that because you're, you, the story you told in the beginning, how you got started, you know, you're so passionate about this. Clearly you're pouring your heart and soul into it. And you were, I'm hearing that you were not so confident, especially on that first one, right? You were a little right. nervous. And so, but in that moment, they loved it and they were encouraging and that really pushed you. And now, you know, you're in a completely different place professionally, but was there a point along the way, and it sounds like this bride might have been, <laughs> that they criticized it or whatever, and you, you didn't feel that, you know, you kind of felt like um, not so great about it. How did you handle that? Because it's so, it's so personal, I can tell. Oh, How yeah. did you handle that from a, just even a mental health standpoint? I'm curious. Oh man, so I, I do this painting and it's for me, the product of it isn't what gets me excited, it's the process, right? Yeah. So the more passionate I am about the process leading up to it as a byproduct of that, it reflects on the painting. However, <laughs> she was very nice. I, I do the presentation and you know we have the photographer, the videographer, and she fakes it, right? Like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. That's awesome for the pictures. And then I'm like, okay, that's awesome. And then she's like, hey, John, really quick. And I'm like, oh my gosh, 100%. So I hand over the painting to the maid of honor. And then I take the selfie with my couples. And then she's like, you, I don't, she basically said, hey, you made me a little more tanner than I wanted to be. Are you able to fix that? And um, I, I don't have a big butt like how you painted me in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a little... A little like photo she's like you use too much photoshop this is what's going on here <laughs> and i'm like no okay and, and so at that moment i said oh my gosh that's okay would you like me to just do some quick embellishments to you know fix it and she's like you know what it's completely up to you i don't want to take away from the painting process and um you know and at that moment it was kind of awkward yeah so then i was like you know what 
I could have said, I'm good, peace out, high five. But then I was like, no, if you're not madly in love with it, man, I, I don't feel right delivering something that you are not in love with. So then I go back and I do some detailing um, and I do some like layering to kind of, you know, round it out a little bit and then just put in some more highlights to really blend it in. And then I show it to her and she, it was kind of a weird thing. She was like, oh, I, she didn't say this, but it was more like, I like the other version better. <laughs> oh no. She didn't have to say that, but she was more of like, oh, maybe I didn't know what I was talking about. Oh and no. Now she, like she looked a little bit on the yellow side because I had to, I had to fade her with, you know, instead of using a secondary color, now I had to use a highlight. And if I'm just going to highlight her face, I also have to li- highlight any skin. And then the dress was so white that it looked like it was one. And so she was, she, she knew that she kind of kicked herself in the foot. And it's one of those as an artist, it's trust the process. Like, trust me, I'm going to, I'm going to do the best of my ability. That's why you're hiring me in the event that I have to do modifications. You asked, Hey, make, make my butt look smaller and make me softer or lighter. And I did. And then she looked at it and goes, Oh, I don't, you know, she was like, Oh my gosh, thank you. And was like, Oh man, like I like the first version of it better. Mm-hmm. And I, I can tell she didn't want to go back and say, Hey, can you kind of go back and forth? So um, with that, I said, you know what, let me go and just kind of fix it up a little bit. So then I kind of, I kind of met her in the middle. Um, and that's part of it, right? I have the entire wedding day to capture that moment. And luckily I still had three more hours of the reception, but that was a really weird dance. It was like, okay, like for me, it was trying to figure out, okay, like, trust me that, you know, I'm not gonna interrupt another artist's process because I could be taking away from the product. And so it was kind of a weird dance and it was like, okay, cool. So I, you know, I did everything that she did, that she asked and at the very end of it, she still was like, oh, okay, cool. You know, she was kind of bummed, but that, yeah, that was kind of weird. It was yeah. like, oh, okay. Like, you know, mind you, I'm tired at this point and all that stuff. So I really kicked into like seventh gear to make sure that she was taken care of. Mm, awesome. Hey, thanks for sharing <laughs> that story. I know I was like, I really want to ask this because it's so, <laughs> it's so, such a, like a one-time thing, like a photographer can come and take, you know, 600 photos and call through all of them. And, right. and the videographer can get a couple of different angles and have a second shooter and all that. But, you know, you're, you're in that moment, you know, right. being that art, this once in a lifetime piece of unique art. And so I think that's so incredible. Um, talk to me a little bit about the, the wedding and event industry shifting gears here a little bit okay as as you work in this industry um are you seeing because i think you know you you said something about how you send your couples a little date night piece and i think that's a brilliant marketing tactic and i really to be honest haven't really heard of many people doing that you know it's like you kind of have this like okay you're hiring me i'm going to get to work these are the services you've hired me for right right what what inspired you to do that? And do you think, how do you think that other vendors can actually use things like that to increase the value of the services they provide? Oh man, that's such a good question. Um, <clears throat> I, I, that came out of just a expression of love because, you know, when you go to the store, when you go buy a big purchase, right? Whether you go get a car, your wedding dress, it's a very emotional type of purchase. It's not something that you just go, oh, I'm feeling like Taco Bell. And then you just go and it's over with. It's like, no, I want to make sure that this is the right um, thing or the right product for my um, wedding. So for me, I, I, I know a little bit of the psychology of, of buying and selling. So we all have buyer's remorse, right? We go somewhere, oh, it's on sale and swipe it. And then you're like, oh man, I really wanted that. If I would have waited, then So one element that I do that is one to honor them and to remind them of, hey, this is a really good investment because half of the time I really have to educate my couples on, you don't need a live painter at your wedding, right? That's not part of uh, the essentials of a wedding. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a want. And so educating them on, hey, this is my, one of my biggest selling point is, hey, let me, let me paint a picture for you, (laughs) pun intended. Um, Let me paint a picture of how I on the feeling. I'm going to paint a picture of the emotion 
that I'm going to capture on your wedding day. And they get very emotional because their fiance, they've never been called Mr. and Mrs. Garcia for the first time. So I almost take them, I travel them and I take them in time going, okay, now picture this. It's your beautiful wedding day. You have all the elements, you have your family, you have your friends, you have your dress, you have your groom, everything is perfect. Everything is there. Imagine the emotion, imagine them going, hey, you are now mine and I am yours. Now imagine that on canvas. And they're like, it's a different way of selling. I'm not selling them a product. I'm selling them an emotion. Mm -hmm. I'm selling them relationally. So they've already bought in and they've already like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So the psychology of that is okay. And within, I don't want them to have buyer's remorse. So within about a month or six weeks, I send them a welcome to the John Garcia event painting family with a gift. And then they feel continually loved Mm. the date night kit. Then after that, I wait maybe another six to seven weeks. And then I just drop a little bit of value. Um, you know, I can give them a, uh, like a template of love languages or recommendations on books or saying, Hey, I have a PDF a file of here's some stuff for you guys to really remind yourself of why you are in love. Because in that planning, there's so much to do flowers and events and musicians and caterers that you almost forget about each other because you're planning so much. Mm -hmm. So I created this in my date night kit. I created a date night template that basically just speaks into, hey, tell me the first time that, um, tell me your first memory of me. Tell me how I can serve you better. Tell me how I can, it's all about giving and giving to one another because that's at the end of the day, after the wedding is gone, after everything is gone, real life happens. And I try to tune into that because even after the wedding is over, I want them to remember on how I made them feel and validate them for hiring me and our team to give them such an emotional process and an emotional product. And so I think it's beautiful because I love setting myself apart because I'm a niche uh, market or in a, a niche um, lane. So the fact that I'm so unique, I shouldn't be able to do this, but the fact that I do just goes above and beyond. And to me, I look at that as the referral process mm -hmm. because if somebody hires you to do this and they deliver, that's amazing. You're going to high five them. But if they hire, if I hire you to do this and you give me that and some and more, right? There's a law called the law of reciprocity where now I want to do something nice in return for you. You didn't have to go above and beyond. We hired you for, for, for this, right? But you gave us this. The very least that I could do is give you a review, mm -hmm. tell you, tell my friends, post about you. And so now that I've given them so much value, they now psychologically feel, man, we got to, we got to, we got to hook John up. I'm going to tell him everybody to get a live wedding painter because he takes care of you. He, he really walks with you. He blesses you. He gives you these date night kits. He really just becomes part of that journey versus just another vendor. So um, I love that I can continue to educate the wedding industry that my heart is, Hey, instead of making a transactional industry, let's, bring it back to the relational industry. Because if all of the vendors had that compassion to one another saying like, hey, I may not be, I may not be for you, but let me give you somebody that, let me tell you, or let me show you who would be the right fit. I mean, this would be just an abundant uh, community and it is. And so I think at the very core of that is relationship. And so that's what I really, really focus on. And that has propelled and I do a little bit of marketing, but the relationship element of that is what really sets me apart where now I, I have brides that are continually telling their friends without me even knowing it. I have event coordinators telling their brides without me even knowing it. I have photographers telling brides without me even knowing it. I have florists and uh, bakers telling other people, hey, I was at a wedding. There was a live painter. His name was John. He was phenomenal. Oh, that's weird. And then they Google Life Painter and boom, I come up. So being intentional and being strategic in that, and that all comes to taking care of, of, the, of that need and treating somebody in a very humane way mm -hmm. has the greatest dividends, man. It pays out the greatest rewards 
yes, you're going to give them a product, but at the same time, now they're going to be inclined to, you didn't have to do that. It's the same way when somebody, you know, uh, tips you or gives you a compliment. Oh man, dude, I love, I love your shirt. Oh man. Awesome. Thank you. I love your shoes. Mm -hmm. Hey, have a good day. You have a good, you know what I mean? So it's that law of reciprocity that psychologically, when you take that another level, have you seen that episode of the office where um, Dwight and Andy kind of go back and forth on trying to one up each other on, uh, you know, basically like, Hey, you have a good day. Here's a tip. Let me polish your briefcase. Yep, yep. No, let me buy you tacos. No, let me buy you. They're kind of out. It's the same. It's the same principle. So Sorry, I had to throw that in there. <laughs> no, 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 I love it. I can tell you're an office fan. I think I think we have uh, plenty of office fans here in the audience. Um, but I love that I love that you said that bringing it back to the relational standpoint. I think so often as business owners, you know, it's tough to remember on our 60th or 70th or mm. you know 200th wedding that this is that person's first wedding. Right. You know, and, or, you know, or maybe second wedding or whatever, third wedding, but still like, this is not something that just happens to them on a weekly basis Right. And so to bring some of that emotion back into it. I, I love that. Totally beautiful. Yeah. Um, I want to do one last component before I know we have to wrap up for today, but this has been so fun talking to you, John. Um, has there been a moment we have, we have this segment of the show called OMG, right? So <gasps> Has there been a moment at a wedding that you've just been like, oh my gosh, what is going on here? You know, it could be that, you know, someone important didn't show up, a big argument. We've had all sorts of different different answers for this on the show, but I'm curious, have you had any oh my gosh moments uh, at any of the weddings that you've been at? Oh man, <clears throat> yes. I And they've been good, right? It hasn't been a OMG, like that sucks. It's been like, I'm floored by it. And I'll share this because it's, I, I was like, this is out of this world, right? Like having me as a, as a painter is, is like awesome, right? But they had this and I was like, get out of town. This is, this is like next level. I was at a wedding. It was at the beautiful Terrania Resort in Palos Verdes. And this wedding was beautiful. So they, this couple, as everybody was walking in, got a, an envelope and I'm like, oh, that's awesome. This is really cool. It was beautiful. And then on the envelope, it said, it kind of cued us when to open it. And I'm like, oh, that's strange. So I put it in my pocket and the wedding was stunning. It was gorgeous. And then the ceremony happened and the bride and the groom, great friends of mine, uh, they kissed. And so then when the pastor said, all right, for the very first time, I pronounced you Mr. and Mrs. And then they said, open the envelope. And there were live butterflies inside the envelope. Oh, and whoa. They, and they opened it. Um, and <laughs> half of the butterflies have had died because we didn't know what was in it. And the oh, other no. the other half of the butterflies flew up and it was beautiful and it was gorgeous. But it was at the same time, it was like they've been in an envelope for a couple of days and they haven't seen sunlight. So when we open it, they like see the sun and they start like spazzing out and it was bro it was beautiful then from there um the blue angels flew over so apparently the dad had a connection and um there was three planes they're called the blue angels yep. um famous they flew over and they they circled the ceremony when this was happening and i thought i was in like in a fairy tale and it was beautiful it's like whether, a movie that's crazy right so it was something where it was like man whether that was part of it or that was the blue angels do that on the first saturday of the month or they do that for the hotel or that was part of the ceremony i got it on video because it was incredible and it was amazing and i loved it so that was something that i was like oh that took that that's took my breath away and i was <laughs> like this is hands down, this is gorgeous. This is amazing. Like, I'm so glad that I get to be here and celebrate my, my friends. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, that's insane. I love that. And I love that you kind of took it in a positive direction. We've heard a lot of like crazy, dramatic, negative ones, but that was, <laughs> or not negative, but just kind of shocking within maybe a negative connotation, but that's, that's right. absolutely beautiful. Well, John, thank you. We're going to wrap up here, uh, but I've, I, it's been wonderful connecting with you and kind of hearing your passion for the art uh, that you create and just the incredible creativity that you bring to the table. And, you know, if folks are listening to this and they want to 
you know, learn more about you, hire you, uh, where can they find out more? Oh, beautiful. Um, <clears throat> so you can go to my website or you can Google me. I think that's the easiest way. It's just depending on it. So my website is JG, my initials, John Garcia, and then eventpainter.com. So that's JG eventpainter.com. And then, or if you Google me at John Garcia event painter, um, I'll come up. And then from there, you can click on my Instagram handle. It's John Garcia underscore urban art. And that's a really, I use that as a portfolio and a really just a, a very educational tool to share with my frienders. Like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Like almost challenging them on, guys, let's continue to serve this industry that is so beautiful and it's so abundant. Let's take care of them instead of it, like you said in the beginning, instead of being transactional, let's make it relational because there's plenty for everybody, right? There's a lot of weddings um, for everybody. And if we all just had that mentality, I think that would be really, it would be really powerful. So that's, that's my, that's who I am. <laughs> Cool. I love it, John. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Uh, for anyone who is watching this on YouTube, you can find us on all podcast platforms. And if you are listening to this on podcasts, go ahead and check us out on YouTube. Uh, it's The Venue Rx. John, thanks for coming on the show today. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you, guys. I appreciate you having me. All right. Have a good one.